we are all familiar with the vegetable mushroom it's very tasty it's used in so many dishes if i ask you to describe this fungi how would you what are the words you would use we would use words like delicate fragile white pale smooth and fleshy no thorns no leaves no bark it just has a little stem and there is a tiny cap on top of it and under this cap are spores or gills that let it expand quickly and so that this fungi can grow all over the surface now there is something about a mushroom that is very unique in the morning or at dawn when you come out of your room you come into the garden and the garden is wet with the rain of the previous night all of a sudden you see mushrooms that are seeming to appear out of nowhere they are found under trees in some corner amid some bushes and this phenomenon of the mushroom has led to many expressions in the english language such as mushrooming all over the place or pop up like a mushroom to pop up like a mushroom means to appear unexpectedly in the most unexpected places sometimes we even see pictures of a mushroom coming right out of a concrete floor that too we see so now it does it happen so suddenly no actually it does take some time to grow that is the primordial fungal growth takes some time to grow but once it appears once that tiny form is made it quickly imbibes a lot of fluid and becomes its full size it becomes fleshy so today we have a poem about mushrooms this is written by silvia plath so let's see overnight very whitely discreetly very quietly so the mushroom is appearing overnight it's very discreet to be discreet is to behave in such a manner that you don't embarrass anyone around you to be very quiet to be very very white our toes our noses take hold on the loom acquire the air so that the tiny mushroom appearing the poet describes it as tiny nose and tiny toes the little toes are just appearing out into the earth the nose is just coming up for some air and it is acquiring this air the word loom means the ground or the earth so this mushroom is appearing on the earth it is dawn nobody sees us stops us betrays us the small grains make room so nobody betrays them nobody notices that the mushroom has come up it is only after the mushroom has made its appearance that we notice it the poet says no one will betray us and these small grains here the spores which actually uh, lend to the expanding of the mushroom or you know the fungi to spread all over the surface this is also called as grains the supposed spores seeds another word is grains for it soft fists insist on heaving the needles the leafy bedding now after nose and toes she says that soft fists the mushroom seems to be like a fist but it is a soft fist the word fist brings to mind a revolutionary one who is fighting one who is fighting for his or her rights but the word soft it is a soft fist so this fist is proclaiming a non violent struggle a struggle of the softer fairer sex so by now we know that the poem refers to the expanded metaphor the mushroom stands for women and these soft fists now we can see in our mind the image of the mushroom pushing that bed of pine needles heaving the needles imagine a forest with 
fully pine needles have fallen on the ground and it is like a bedding of pine needles and the mushroom is pushing through making space taking up air and with those soft fists coming forth even the paving are hammers are rams earless and eyeless so now we come to the terms like hammers and rams Hammers and rams are used to pave the way forth, to somehow push their way through, earless and eyeless. The mushroom has no ears or eyes. There is merely that soft exterior alone. So here women of the period were asked to be earless and eyeless. A woman should not see the injustice that is done to her. She should not hear of the matters that is going on in the world she must not give her opinion she must keep it to herself earless and eyeless she must live perfectly voiceless widen the crannies shoulder through holes she must be perfectly voiceless her voice must not be heard whatever is her due what is given to her she must act accordingly without voicing her opinion Slowly, the mushroom must widen the crannies and through the tiniest space must shoulder through and come forth. Shoulder through holes in the bed of pine needles. We diet on water, on crumbs of shadow, bland mannered, asking little or nothing. So the mushroom, it does not need much space, it does not need much food. It can come spontaneously. In a single night, it can sprout out. In the same way, these ladies who are on a diet of water, on crumbs. Crumbs are usually the leftover of food that is consumed by others. Consumed by a patriarchal society around them. And the little crumbs that are left for them, that alone is to be their diet. Little or nothing, so many of us, so many of us. So now Sylvia Plath says, she brings an important point here. There are so many of the mushrooms and there are so many of women. She brings it to our attention that women make up half the population of the human species. There is strength in numbers and if we support one another, there is nothing we cannot attain. We are shelves, we are tables, we are meek, we are edible. Just like the mushroom, the woman too seems to be edible. She is eaten up by a patriarchal world that asks her to give up all her interests, her aims, her ambitions, her dreams. They have all to be sacrificed. She is to be eaten up. We are shelves, we are tables, we are meek. She says that womankind, they are so fragile. They are treated like tables or shelves. A table or a shelf is a very necessary item in a house. You need a table to keep things. You need a shelf. But at the same time, you can keep these objects wherever you want them. You can place them in any part of the house. They are to do your bidding and what is placed on them alone will remain on them. She is saying, it's time we stop being treated like furniture. Let us not tolerate this. Nudges and showers in spite of ourselves, our kind multiplies. We are nudges and showers. She means we are nudging our way through, just like the mushroom is pushing his way through. It's way through the wet earth. Women too are nudging and shoving and pushing and slowly coming to the forefront. Our kind multiplies. We shall by morning inherit the earth, our foots in the door. Finally, we come to a very positive passage or the last three lines. We shall by morning inherit the earth. It is still darkness for women and the journey of feminism continues. but. Sylvia Plath says that she sees a morning where 
Our foot will be in the door. We will get a space inside that hallway where man and women will be equal. So Sylvia Plath was born in 1932 and died in 1963. She was she belonged to the post-war period, that is after the Second World War. Being born in 1932, she was born along with the war. She grew up in the post-war period. And we have to know that in the 1950s, USA, there was a sudden change. During the war, during the Second World War, all the men were off fighting and the women took on the role of bankers, of traders, of farmers and teachers, of bakers and butchers and all the domestic work and the finance, everything was done by the women. The women came forth from their houses, they learned to drive, they learned to finance and they were playing the role of both man and woman. But after the war, suddenly things were falling back. The men came back and they wanted their jobs back. And the women once again left and returned to the space that was the hearth and the home, looking after their children. And quickly in the 1950s, the popular literature and advertisements started making it very clear that the place of a woman was in the kitchen. They did not want the women to remain in the forefront and here we also see that there was a political background that is USA of the period that is the 1950s did not want communism to threaten their way of democracy so they wanted to put forth these ideals of family life family happiness where the man was the head of the family the woman took care of the children she was always shown in beautiful clothes, partying, having tea parties, looking after the children, watering the plants. And she was always shown beautiful, wearing lovely clothes. So we have to also remember that women of that period were the highest consumers of goods. So it was essential to keep the women in that position. And Sylvia Plath grew up in this kind of a place. and. She, we can call her that she became a martyr in the cause of feminism. Her poetry is mostly confessional. Her very important works are The Bell Jar, Daddy, Lady Lazarus. In all these works, she shows how a woman is subjugated. And if, uh, if you take the work The Haunting of Sylvia Plath by Jacqueline Rose, she shows a psychoanalytic approach where she shows how the works of women writers of the period were judged, criticized and in what order they were placed. Sylvia Plath came into a world in which the literary phraseology itself was made for men. Women of the period could not own land, they could not write wills, they could not prepare uh, and they could not stand for political office. We know that in this much liberated USA, it is only in the 2020s that a woman, Kamala Harris, has now become the vice president. So during the 1950s, political power or political seats were not for women. They were discouraged from holding office, discouraged from any path that was leader leadership oriented. So the jobs that were kept aside for women were mostly teaching, nursing, they were bank clerics, secretaries, actresses. So it was a very few defined jobs. And the 1950s also saw a major dropout of women from colleges and a baby bloom because after the war, People suddenly wanted to go back to the old ways. They wanted to create the happy home image in America of the father, mother, children. So women opted out of colleges and quickly families were expanding. And so this was the situation. And it is in this place that Sylvia Plath tells ladies, 
we are not going to give up like mushrooms that will appear up in the night we are slowly gathering in numbers the day will come when we will run for a political office where we will be in the forefront of the nation where we will step aside and manage not only the home we will no longer be only homemakers wives and mothers we will also be individuals to reckon with the literary devices used in this poem are first of all definitely there is the expanded metaphor where mushrooms are seen as a collective of women there is imagery because such an intense imagery is presented where the mushroom with its tiny nose toes and fists are pushing through the pine needles and taking up space and acquiring air then there is enjambment because one line after the other is floating into a particular idea such that each line continues into the other it is a free verse there is also alliteration e even earless like that the lines have word starting with the same letter thank you mushrooms by silvia plat overnight very whitely discreetly very quietly our toes our noses take hold on the loam acquire the air nobody sees us stops us betrays us the small grains make room soft fists insist on heaving the needles the leafy bedding even the paving are hammers or rams earless and eyeless perfectly voiceless wide in the crannies shoulder through holes we died on water on crumbs of shadow bland mannered asking little or nothing so many of us so many of us we are shells we are tables we are meek we are edible nudges and showers in spite of ourselves our kind multiplies we shall by morning inherit the earth our foots in mushroom